to welcome everyone to the second form of this Congress to review ongoing efforts to expand diversity in the armed forces. I uh, want to thank Senator Carter, who will be here shortly, and chairs the Congressional Black Caucus, Asian Pacific Caucus, and Hispanic Caucus for co hosting this forum. Nearly one year ago, the military leadership. Diversity Commission issued a report on diversity in the armed forces. The commission found that the composition of the military leadership does not represent the overall composition of our armed forces, particularly within career fields, that are pathways to attain senior leadership positions. The commission also found that the service's view of diversity is too narrow and does not encompass the range of knowledge skills, and backgrounds needed to address 21st century challenges. The Commission issued 20 recommendations to, su su to support expanded diversity, and we are grateful to have us with us today retired General Lester Lyles, who chaired the Commission and did just a phenomenal job, and General Lyles, I really want to thank you. He will provide us with an update on how he and other commissioners believe the armed services have progressed and implemented these recommendations. In short, although the military has made some progress, much more needs to be done. The former commissioners found that in many instances, the armed forces have placed recommendations on standby, with over half of the recommendations still under review or in the process of being implemented. In addition to General Lyles, we are very fortunate to have with us retired Major General Antonio Taguba, who was the Army's second Filipino American to attain General Officer rank. He will offer his views on the importance of diversity in the military's mission, as well as thoughts about how to prevent hazing throughout the ranks by requiring accountability and promoting the values of inclusion. Also with us is Renice Armour, the first African-American female Navy naval aviator in the Marine Corps and America's first African-American female combat pilot in the United States military. She flew a Super Cobra attack helicopter in the 2003 invasion of Iraq and served two tours in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. I also want to express my appreciation for the officials on our second event. We have representatives from the Office of Secretary of Defense, the Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, Coast Guard, and National Guard Bureau. The fact that you are all here today demonstrates your commitment to diversity, and we thank you for appearing. As the Commission stated in its report last year, and I quote, the diversity of our service members is the unique strength of our military in the world. The Commission found that a highly qualified and diverse officer corps is essential to our national security. For that reason, the pathways to leadership must be open to individuals of every race and ethnicity as well as to women. Unfortunately, we still face many challenges in meeting these very, very important goals. The senior level officer corps in the armed services continues to be characterized by significant underrepresentation of minorities. In the Air Force, for example, the number of African Americans and Hispanic officers has continued to decrease over the past several years. Other African Americans and Hispanics now make up about 27% of the United States population. They make up only 13% of the active duty officer corps in the armed services. Compounding these challenges are reports over the last several years of race-related hazing and other harassment. One of the most troubling reports involved Lance Corporal Harry Lou, Congresswoman Chu's nephew, who committed suicide shortly after enduring extreme harassment. In another case, Seven members of the Coast Guard were convicted for their participation in a hazing incident 
that involved tying down federal crew members, forcing them to strip, and in some cases engaging in inappropriate sexual conduct. As a former chairman of the House Committee on the Coast Guard and Maritime Transportation, it pains me greatly to hear about these cases. This behavior is absolutely intolerable and beneath any member of the United States Army Services. The purpose of the day's forum is not only to hear about the military's progress in implementing the Commission's recommendation, it is about working together in a sustained way in order to chart a course for progress in the future. Diversity is one of our greatest strengths as a nation. It is not our problem, it is our promise. The decisions we make today will affect generations yet unborn. These issues are bigger than us, and they are bigger than now. For these reasons, I urge the military officials here today to be as clear as possible about the concrete steps that you are taking and still need to take. To help our military realize the full potential inherent in our nation's diversity. I want to thank you all for being a part of this, and I look forward to hearing from our panelists.